Hi everyone. I'm uh, I'm Paula Forteza. I'm a French MP. Uh, we are going to be discussing for the next 45 minutes around the question of, of vote at 16 and uh, the way it can promote youth legitimacy and capability to decide. And I'm happy to introduce today Ivar Kamal. Uh, from the International Office of the Estonian National Youth Council, and Camille Michel from uh, On Epre, a network uh, advocating for environmental issues in France. The, the organizers uh, of the Open Gov Youth Summit this year are trying to answer a very precise question. I'm going to read it to you. Uh, do you think that young people should be at the heart of the decision making process on what comes next? And I think the issue of the momentum is uh, very important regarding a vote at 16, because we are today in a crisis regarding COVID-19 uh, uh, with impacts, social impacts, economic impacts uh, that will be very important for young people. Um, we have a young population that is uh, impacted by what, by, by what we call eco-anxiety. Uh, it's a sort of uh, feeling of uh, uncertainty, uncertainty regarding the future. We are today taking decisions uh, regarding the future of the planet, regarding the future of their own life, regarding how youth can uh, build their own uh, projects, can project themselves uh, in, in their personal lives. And we really think that it's very important today very important that we give them a voice, that we give them the possibility uh, to decide on what's next. This question of, of vote at 16 uh, is on the agenda in several countries today. Uh, in Germany, for instance, uh, where young people can already vote at the local level, uh, several parties have put in the agenda uh, this question of vote at 16 at the national level. Uh, we have also in Swiss, uh, there has been a bill uh, that has been voted uh, allowing uh, 16 uh, and plus to vote. Uh, in Belgium, in, uh, in October, it has been decided that young people over 16 will be able to vote for European elections. Uh, in, in San Francisco also, there's going to be a consultation uh, in November on the same issue. Uh, and in France, we have tried also uh, last few months with a big coalition of actors uh, of student unions, of young uh, youth associations, of MP coming from several political parties, we have tried to put this issue on the agenda. We have had a very interesting and uh, deep uh, discussion and debate at the National Assembly, but the government finally decided not to go further and to uh, postpone this discussion for uh, the presidential elections to come. We know that this issue is already a reality in some countries. Uh, in Europe, for instance, we have Austria, Malta, uh, Estonia that have uh, pioneered uh, on this issue of vote at 16. Uh, so we are very uh, happy today to be able to have some inputs about what uh, this evolution was like uh, in Estonia. So just to start, um, maybe Ivar, can you tell us a little bit about when and how uh, this implementation of Vote at 16 uh, was done in, uh, in Estonia, in your country, and what did it mean uh, for the young population? Uh, how did they go to vote? Uh, what was, how do, do you analyze uh, this reform? So, uh, yes, uh, actually, it was a very long process uh, of uh, discussion with different stakeholders. Uh, it took us uh, around 10 years 
uh, to fully implement that. We had a lot of uh, different uh, types of researches uh, conducted uh, throughout the period of uh, the consultation. So actually it started uh, in 2006 and in 2016 it was implemented and in 2017 there was the first time when uh, 16 or 17 years old uh, young people had the possibility to vote uh, on municipal elections. Um, actually the lowering of the voting age is uh, consistent with the basic of principles of democracy and uh, According to that principles, uh, as many citizens um, as possible must be legible to vote and uh, each restrictions must be uh, substantiated. And our studies uh, and studies of other international organizations show that uh, allowing uh, young people and 16, 17 years old to vote uh, actually is, um, uh, is a way to give them possibility to uh, talk about their own uh, to make their, the, the problems which they see in society more visible. And actually once one study showed that even 14 years old people are able to understand society, what's going on there. And they also, uh, and the voting is a, is a part of the uh, civic education, it should be, because by taking part in the elections, uh, young people gain valuable experience that sh and that shows what's necessary to participate actively in decision-making process. Uh, the interesting fact about the turnout, uh, actually it um, didn't vary uh, if we take into account and the consideration the overall, uh, it is usually in Estonia around 60-65% and, and the elections uh, which were held in 2017 it was 59% uh, uh, in the group of people of 16-17 years old, so they were pretty actively participating in the, vote, in the voting, but the interesting point which used the um, the those people who are against that decision is that they say um, that only a small group of people took part because we have also the e-elections which can be uh, held in the in the internet and the, 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 this opportunity used around 20 percent of the 16 17 years old people 80 percent came to the uh, to the place where they can vote because they wanted to try for the first time how this voting process is going on, not just to click uh, on the special program for which candidate they are voting for, but just to try and understand why it's, why it's so important and how it's going on there on the, on the, on the place where the uh, elections uh, took place. So uh, it's, it's, it's just a small brief introduction into the into the issue of the lowering uh, voting age to 16 years old and we are also uh, now uh, looking forward to discuss this uh, issue on uh, the parliament about uh, about the voting uh, about the lowering voting age in parliament around the european parliament elections so we have uh, a space for uh, for the discussions on that on the matter thank you ivar um Camille, would you like to share with us how did you experience this debate in France? Uh, we were very surprised to see uh, so much skepticism uh, of the general population around this issue and of the government. And sometimes we um, we had the, 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 the youth themselves, the, the young people themselves, telling us they didn't feel ready or they didn't feel legitimate to participate or educated enough on these topics at school. Um, so, so Camille, would you like to share with us how, how you live this, uh, this debate on your side? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I think that many young people don't feel uh, legitimate because they don't receive any political education. Uh, in school, we have some uh, uh, loads of uh, courses, but uh, French courses are really, uh, we say that they are vertical because the teacher is giving uh, some knowledge and uh, the students are only uh, noting and they don't take part in any debate. And uh, to uh, construct a political uh, sensibility, I think that you need to enter into a debate and uh, to uh, affirm yourself. So uh, voting and uh, being uh, legitimate to vote uh, is, uh, is, is through education. So I think that uh, 
uh, is there is a, a huge amount of work to uh, make a young sensibilized to politics because they are really interested in politics as uh, the climate uh, strikes uh, has shown it but uh, they are not they don't feel legitimate because they are not used to take part into a debate so uh, putting the debate uh, part of the uh, official program will be a solution and uh, just uh, making uh, the students uh, taking part in some different activities where they just don't only take uh, the knowledge from the professor will be uh, interesting uh, as well. Thank you, Camille. And maybe a question for, for both of you. Um, a lot of people say, yes, uh, we see uh, young people very mobilized uh, on the streets, on social media, uh, around uh, the environment, around feminism, around fight against violence, about uh, around the fight against discrimination. But we don't see them uh, vote uh when when they have uh, the possibility to do it uh, that was one of the answers we got from emmanuel macron our president and his uh, prime minister is that they said we first want to see uh young people vote uh, before lowering uh the age of, of voting and how how would you explain uh, maybe this, this difference between uh, a political engagement um, elsewhere, not, not in the institutions themselves, and a political engagement in the institutions? Is, is it the same? Is it that uh, young people today want to try other uh, forms of engagement and won't necessarily uh, go uh, voting? Or, or is it uh, just because they don't have the possibility to do it that, that we don't see them there? Uh, do you think that lowering the age of 16 is a good way to fight um, the fact that, that, that uh, young people don't vote? Uh, so, uh, actually, I have one very interesting example uh, when we firstly tried to uh, to somehow uh, ask and to ask the people from 16, 17 years old what they think about uh, that. And um, it happened in 1990 uh, when, the, uh, when there was uh, elections on decision-making body called Congress of Estonia. At that time, Estonia was a part of the Soviet Union. And in a year after, we gave our independence. And the Congress of Estonia was the Estonian citizens representative body elected by the Estonian citizens. And uh, one of the members of the board of the Estonian uh, citizens uh, general committee that organized that elections, Eva Bernaste, um, he said uh, such thing that as many uh, young people participated in the uh, registration of the citizens and the youth were very patriotic and active back to the, to the organizers of elections did not want to deprive the 16 years old activists from the joy of having participated in the elections of the Congress of Estonia as their first voting experience. Um, and it actually was a very historic moment as um, these elections were the first in the European territory where the 16 years old person have the, had the opportunity to vote. Um, another or argument which can be used uh, for the vote, for the lowering uh, is that um, uh, and, and many actually the many people who think that it's not a good way to go uh, they they say that young people are not interested in politics that's not true uh, we conducted the shadow elections and uh, in the project of shadow elections the young people's age 13 17 participate in the simulated elections and. Uh, the shadow elections actually pointed out a specific youth-related problem in Estonian politics. If we go into the heart of the problem and add scientific data, low participation show that political parties do not pay attention to young person, which is why young person are not interested in political parties and their positions. So it's a, it's a responsibility of the political parties to, um, to, to, to present the program of their party to the young people, 16, 17 years old, and actually to involve them to the pro to that process and ask them and uh, also to motivate them to come to the 
uh, to come to vote. That, that is the main principle and that is the main point. So if the political parties uh, are interested in uh, providing some special treatment to the people uh, and to the youngsters in age 16, 17, they, they will be interested to go to vote for that. Mm -hmm. Camille, what do you think about it? Yes, I agree with what was said. And I want to add that uh, if you are rejected from a system uh, that don't recognize your ability to vote, it is normal that uh, after, at 18, you're not uh, sensibilized to, uh, to vote. If from uh, 17 to 18, you are rejected from the, the uh, institutional um, uh, system, you can't uh, get interested after. And uh, some uh, studies shown that uh, if you vote younger, you take more the habit to vote, so you vote more. So saying that uh, youngers have to uh, vote at 18, and then if they are well mobilized, we, we can put the vote at 16 is not a, a strong argument, because if you vote younger, you vote well. Uh, and I, I want to add also that uh, votes uh, voting for a representative is uh, not the only political participation. You already participate in some uh, uh, in political activities, and uh, uh, voting for a representative is not the only thing because you can also vote uh, at a referendum or at a political uh, uh, program uh, for local activities and. Uh, if uh, youngers don't feel um, really close to those who, who they are voting for, it is because they don't uh, resemble to them. Uh, all the uh, many politicians nowadays are uh, rather old. So if some parties, uh, such uh, as uh, our political party that is named Allons Enfants, if some parties were presenting the people that were younger, maybe the younger people will vote more because if they don't feel represented by the politicians, there is no way that uh, they can vote for them. So that's what one of uh, our mission in our political party to present young people so that uh, they have a political party that is interested in their interests and that is uh, defending them. So uh, putting the right to vote at 16 could uh, reconciliate uh, the young people rather than uh, um, getting uh, and keeping them apart from a system that is uh, really uh, put under uh, question because uh, some young people take other action uh, in politics. So if we want to put the representative democracy and the vote in the center of our system, uh, I think that uh, putting them at 16 is uh, necessary. Thank you, Camille. We have some, some questions on the chat and it's very similar to some of, of the questions we have during the, the, the public debate in France. Uh, they, they are asking if and how can we um, certify or that, that uh, young people will not uh, vote like their parents or will not be manipulated by uh, political parties. Uh, I think this is related to also uh, how they are educated at school uh, regarding, uh, regarding politics uh, and how they can uh, construct their own political views and, and, and their, their own uh, uh, way of, of understanding politics. But it's also an argument that we had seen uh, historically in France, for instance, when uh, we were going to, or when we gave uh, the right to vote to women, uh, we, the, the detractors were saying um, that women would uh, vote as uh, their husbands that they will have they would have an influence vote a vote that would be influenced uh, by other actors and that they wouldn't be um, autonomous or independent in their in their choice so so i think this this argument can uh, take ver various forms uh, but this this capacity of of young people to to decide by themselves uh, is um, 
is is very questioned when we put the uh, the, the proposal of lowering uh, vote age at 16 uh, on the national uh, debate. Uh, there's also this question about um, how can we make uh, political parties that think that that uh, youth vote will be against them. How can we convince them to to go forward? Um, in France, for instance, uh, a lot of politicians think that young people will vote uh, left wing or will vote uh, for environmental parties, um, for green parties. Um, and, and we, we see when we see the actors that support the, the proposal, we had uh, more of the, the progressive parties, more of the left-wing parties that were okay with it. And we had the right-wing uh, parties that uh, didn't follow us. Um, so what do you think maybe Ivar and Camille on both these issues about uh, how do uh, young people have this capacity of choosing by themselves or will they be influenced or have, for instance, extreme votes? That's an argument also that comes back regularly. Um, and on the other issue of um, will they necessarily vote uh, at left wing and uh, green parties and, and how to convince uh, other parties that it's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. So I would like to start with this influential thing, but uh, if this argument is actually insufficient because everyone can be influenced, even the people under age 18, 60, 65, 80, 85, we are all influenced. And this actually argument cannot be used. The second, uh, the second point uh, regarding that is uh, then when they, when the Op op opponents of, of this decision say that um, the 16 years people are not mature enough to take decisions, assume responsibility for themselves and their choices. Um, actually, most of them have already acquired a compulsory basic education and many legal rights and obligations apply to them, this, the, to, to them despite the fact that they are minors uh, in the Republic of Estonia, so it's 18 years old, the age of majority. A citizen can be prosecuted for a misdemeanor or criminal offense when the person is at least 14 years of, of age. When a person is at least 15 years of age, the person has the right to get married, provide, uh, provided that both parents are given consent to the marriage. When a person is at least seven years old in our country, uh, it has the right to do the light work in the field of culture, art, sports, and advertising, and on the basis of the employment contract. When a person is at least 15 years old uh, or not subject to the obligations to attend school, the person has the right to work without being restricted by the aforementioned provisions. When a person is at least 16 years of age, uh, the person may apply for a limited right to drive vehicles in category B. And the legal age of onset of minor to engage in sexual activity is actually 14 years old. And there is, a, uh, and there is also the uh, national defense obligation uh, and the person is, if they are not uh, taking part in any kind of education, uh, they can't be selected uh, when they reach the age of 16 years of, uh, of 16, 16, 7, sorry, 17 years. And there is also a lot of more arguments regarding that. But I think that we see that many, many um, obligations and many, many uh, rights already given to the minors and it cannot be used as an argument that okay, so it's not sufficient because even 16 year and 17 years old people can actually live without parents, it's possible. It, it's not so maybe spread around the country, but it's possible. And uh, regarding the, the voting uh, to the extremist political uh, so-called uh, parties, I, I don't mean that, uh, I don't want to say that uh, the Greens or others could be extremist parties. No, I just want to say that uh, those who think that actually some kind of extremist parties could um, raise their popularity. Uh, we had um, one, uh, um, one project, as I already mentioned before, the shadow elections, and we simulated the vote, uh, the voting, uh, uh, the voting for the for the people in age 13, 17, and compared that with the official results, uh, taking into account all the voters turnout, and we figured out that there was actually no any kind of major changes and major uh, differences between. Uh, 
the the real uh, situation in the country and the the voting of the people in age 13 to 17. So they the parties uh, received the same almost the same percentage as it as it is as it in usual elections, and um, and. Uh, and actually, none of the extremist parties were somehow overpresented, and it was in the in in uh, in the borders uh, of the usual statistical error. So, no of any of these arguments can be actually proved without any kind of uh, research. So that's why it cannot be used without any kind of the ground on that. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Thank you, Ivar. Uh, it's very useful to have this this data because we don't have a lot of um, of arguments of scientific arguments to uh, to disprove these arguments uh, because we simply didn't have a lot of uh, of elections uh, from from young people. Uh, what do you think, Camille, about uh, these issues? Um, I think that extreme votes or ideologies uh, place themselves uh, outside the institutional system. So mm -hmm. if we keep uh, the young people outside the system, it is the best way to make uh, extreme ideology flourish. So uh, integrating them in the system will get them interested in it and uh, will the prevent them from extreme votes. So I think that's the, that uh, it is the opposite uh, paradigm of uh, ready of uh, extreme votes um, for the young people, because if we are putting uh, the, the right to vote at 16, it will uh, get them integrated in the system. So uh, there is no reason for them to vote more for the extremes because they are not the pulled apart, they are not marginalized. So uh, the several studies have shown that uh, uh, the origins of the populism was in the contestation, in the contestation when you are pulled apart and uh, when you're marginalized from the system. So yes, uh, I think that uh, integrating them will uh, make them interested in the system and uh, will uh, keep them from the extreme uh, ideologies. Thank you, Camille. Um, so we have uh, more or less 50 uh, participants today. Uh, do you want to ask questions or make comments or share maybe experiences from your countries regarding this issue? You can raise uh, your hand. <laughs> no? Maybe I, I would love to know a little bit more about the participants. Um, where do you come from? What uh, are your interests? Okay. So I, I'm going to read one of the comments on the chat. Voting at the age of 16 years, what different impact will it have on electing the right candidate for a public office? In my country, Liberia, people at the age of 30 and above are not making any good decision in electing public officials. So what quality decision will a 60-year-old voter make in electing a public official? I think the, the issue, um, if, if we are Democrats and if we uh, believe that uh, the right to vote is a right, in itself, uh, but not a question of capabilities and capacities, uh, we should not judge um, the, the, the output and, and who people will vote or will decide to vote. Um, in, in France, at least in, in constitutional terms, uh, the, the, the vote is, is, is really a right in itself. And, and anyone can choose who they who they want and and nobody has nothing to to say about it and, and I think it's it's important that that we understand that our our democratic systems are at stake here and uh, that we really need to to give back the um, uh, 
the trust in institutions and uh, to, to really give uh, the tools uh, to everyone uh, to, to be able to, to participate and understand and, and be uh, hopeful uh, about uh, the, the capacity of our democratic system to um, face uh, the different issues uh, today. And, and we can only do it by extending uh, the rights and extending uh, participation uh, progressively. Uh, in, in France, and I think in, in, in a lot of countries around the world, the story of democracy has been the story of the extension of uh, the right to vote. Uh, in France, it was so. so uh, first, we were in a censitary uh, system. Then uh, there was the universal right to vote. Then the vote uh, to write for women. Then the vote to write uh, from uh, French people uh, abroad. And uh, then we lowered uh, from 21 to 18. And now we really think that in this uh, process, in this historical process, the next step. The next step is to lowering uh, the age uh, at 16. So, so I really think that uh, even uh, we don't have a judgment to, to, to formulate around what the output will be, but it's just a question of, of rights and uh, of giving um, a really a hope and, and more legitimacy and more stability uh, to our democratic system. I don't know if Ivor or Camille, you want to add something around that. I, I think that yes, that's that's, that's actually very true, and uh, we should uh, also understand that uh, in it, it's actually not easy to to build a democratic uh, society, and for 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 different countries, it took uh, many many years, and for Estonia, it's also we are, we 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 we, are, we cannot yet say that we are fully 100% democracy. I think that not even, no, there is no countries in the world which are 100% democratic, where there is a, all the human rights are, uh, are protected and so on, but we are aspiring to that. And, and that is very important. And for, for some countries, it will take much more years than, for example, for, for, for those who, who, who did it uh, faster. So it's, yes. So I'm, I'm also on the same side with Paula. Yes, me too. And I wanted to add that uh, vote in France is uh, really linked to uh, uh, a special image of uh, citizenship. And uh, that's why uh, France one, was one of the latest country who uh, put the, the right to vote for women it was because the, the image of a woman didn't fit with the image of the citizenship that was inherited from the Lumière and from the French Revolution. So I think that we need to redefine, to have a redefinition of the citizenship because we don't have to keep this myth of the French Revolution who was the, uh, the, the guy uh, who was uh, uh, like uh, 30 years old and uh, rather old and uh, uh, that was a man. We have to open this definition and to be more diverse and more inclusive to everybody. So uh, opening the right to vote is uh, a part of that. I will read two, two new questions that we have on the chat. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, I'm looking for it. Uh, Tina Bataria that uh, says that Dexter Young and I are in the Philippines and we're working on efforts to encourage youth voting very soon. What do you think are best practices to spark awareness, feeling of legitimacy among young people when participating in the election process? Uh, and then we have Catherine Walton from the UK uh, who says, don't you think all of these statements about absolute rights um, apply to everyone and that having an age limit of 16 is just as arbitrary as having age limit of 18? Do you think we should work towards universal suffrage uh, with no age, age limit at all? And then... Um, mm -mm. 
Yes, and then we have another question. Don't you think opening the right to vote to 16 year old or other groups in future perhaps must be accompanied by effective political education? So, so on these issues, I think, what are the best practices? Um, in France, what we did to really put the subject on the agenda was to um, uh, launch a petition. And we had a, a petition that was signed by uh, a very a lot of, of different actors from uh, MPs, from different political parties to student unions to uh, youth uh, associations uh, to uh, specialists on, on democratic issues and on, on political participation. And, and this helped us have a, 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 a big mobilization. We went a lot to the, to the media also. Uh, we had uh, young people themselves uh, voicing for it. I think it's very important that uh, it's not only uh, the, the political leaders or responsibles that that take uh, a stand for it, but it, that young people themselves uh, make themselves heard uh, on, on this issue. Uh, regarding um, the, the effective political education, yes, of course, this was something that in France was um, uh, a, a feedback that came from young people themselves. Uh, in our first draft, uh, bill draft, we, were, we, we didn't talk about this. And it's the young people themselves that said, yes, we want the right to vote, but we also need for, uh, in order to be able to vote, to have more uh, citizen education at school we need to have, uh, for instance, debates. We need to compare uh, the programs with uh, with our teachers. Uh, we need to have simulations. Uh, we need to uh, exchange with uh, with associations. So this is something we need to put more effort into, so that uh, when they have their first experience of voting, uh, young people are accompanied by. Um, a, a, a whole um, like process of, of, of understanding and of having the keys uh, to read uh, the political context. What do you, Camille and, and Ivar, think about this? I could start about uh, the how to maybe uh, justify the point of view. So I think that uh, it's very good to start with the petition. It's the one way in democratic society. The second way is also to conduct some researches. I think that you will receive this, uh, the pretty similar results as we as we receive. So for example, to ask about the people in age 14 to 17, what they think about the society, that, does they understand that? Uh, do they understand? Uh, do they understand what's going on there? What are their political parties and so on? And I think that uh, when you receive these results, then you can already uh, have a solid ground, uh, and you can show that actually, okay, so young people think think about uh, uh, this issue in a that way. So it's pretty similar to to that what what the so-called adult people think, and. Uh, as I said uh, already before, that actually already starting from the age 14, the young people understand what's going on in society because they are visiting schools, they are visiting some, uh, uh, some I don't know, uh, maybe some events, they, they are walking around the streets, they, they see what's going on actually in the country and uh, they, they, they also start to understand what is uh, their particular situation in, in that country it could be used. So, and regarding also the very interesting point about the, the voting age, about the unified voting age, or, or why do we have 18 or 16? Actually, there is no definite standard that must be followed. I, I have an example of, of our history, uh, of, of our 102 years uh, of history, that in the first, uh, constitution uh, in 1920, there was a, like a social agreement uh, that the people could vote in the age of 20. And then in 1938, uh, it was raised to 22. Uh, 
uh, and the reasons for that is, 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 is visible actually, because there was a pre-war period and uh, the may, many kinds of, of uh, issues happened in Europe. And then in 19, 1990, it was lower to 60. I mean, uh, it, was, it was not lowered. It was, uh, there was a possibility to, to be a part of the Congress uh, elections, as I mentioned before. And then 1992, we decided actually it could be 18, but there is no unified age. In, in some countries, there is a 16, for example, in Austria, Malta, also the Scottish parliament, uh, parliamental uh, elections. And in some countries, it's 18, and maybe in some countries, it's even, even higher. So that's actually the uh, way and the question of social agreement. Thank you, Ivor. Camille, maybe you have a lot of experience uh, working uh, with with uh, young people that that want to be engaged, and so so what are the, the barriers that that you have encountered, and the, what are maybe the best practices uh, in order to go further, not only on, on vote at sixteen, but on uh, political engagement, youth political engagement more broadly. So I think that uh, political uh, life needs uh, to readapt to modern life. Uh, it's uh, funny because when we are seeing the evolutions of several fields, we can see that uh, from uh, last century to nowadays, everything has changed. For example, in uh, commerce or in uh, several uh, or in industry, etc. But in politics, nothing has changed. And uh, so we need to reinvent uh, politics to uh, go more to um, young people uh, activities such as the social media or some uh, new kinds of uh, conferences, just like we are doing uh, now. We are on a Zoom meeting, so we are on the digital platforms. Um, so we need to readapt our uh, practice and uh, to and I would like also to uh, come on the question on uh, the universal. Uh, somebody asked if we needed to uh, rethink the universal. So I think that it is a necessity to rethink the universal because it uh, doesn't take uh, the young people into consideration. Uh, universals uh, kills diversity, so that's why we need to meet the people, to meet the young people and to uh, take them uh, in uh, political activities where they are integrated in our political parties, uh, they are only uh, less than 25 years old, and uh, we are constructing some uh, political stances together. Uh, we want to uh, have a theoretical uh, improvement, but uh, we need to um, put our, uh, our ideologies into practice, uh, practical cases. So uh, that's why the petition for me was uh, so important. A petition is the possibility to meet every people and to uh, mobilize them individually and uh, pulling apart the universals. Uh, if we need to pull apart the universal, it is true that we need to put an age for the majority and uh, for the right to vote. Uh, we think that uh, 16 is the best one because uh, we need to be as inclusive as possible, so it is good to put it younger. But seven, 16 is the age when you have your panel majority, where you, you can uh, fund your own association and where you have a sexual majority. So uh, even if universals have to be uh, pulled apart, we need to uh, find the age because we can't uh, put it when uh, it is too young, so 16 is the best uh, one. And uh, I would like to uh, come again on the point that uh, young people need to act in the political system to get interested in it and uh, to uh, vote. Because if we only uh, ask them to vote every uh, two years, it is not the way to get interested in uh, a system that uh, is, uh, it seems to be really far away from them even if it is uh, defining the way they live, uh, they don't necessarily uh, are aware of it. So uh, there is a, a lack also of communication on uh, the political decision. So to open the political life and uh, to, uh, it, it is um, 
important also, uh, for example, for the public life to be uh, communicated on the digital the platforms to uh, um, to give information to young people and to get aware of them that uh, political uh, politic life is uh, everywhere and it is not a far uh, field from them. Thank you, Ivor. Thank you, Camille. Uh, we have to be ending this uh, uh, this uh, intervention. Uh, our time is up. Uh, this was very, very interesting. I think I would like to thank uh, really the OpenGov uh, Youth Summit for the organization because it, it helps us to have the feedback from people all around the world uh, in this idea of, of, of global citizenship and of uh, helping each other out uh, to advocate for these issues. We, we had on the chat uh, uh, feedbacks from people from Nigeria, from Kenya, from uh, uh, UK, from Zimbabwe, from the Philippines. It's it's really impressive and uh, it gives a, a lot of, of hope to, to all of us. So thank you. Uh, thank you again. And uh, we uh, we keep up uh, the, the, the good work and we don't hesitate uh, to contact us on social media to have uh, more inputs on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. There are women who were the first. Women who demanded justice. Women who defied silence and upended expectations. La primera vez que pedí información pública cuando tenía 22 años como que no me tomaban en serio con lo que hacía y hoy por hoy hemos llevado adelante investigaciones que han terminado con funcionarios procesados y muchos de estos casos terminaron en la justicia. But this isn't a story about some of us. This is a story about how we move past the stereotypes that hold us back. All of us. People call me aggressive because we stood up for rights. What does aggression come out of breaking rules? So you break a rule and that rule is made more important than the principle.